Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. And did you know that if you have an X32, you can actually send your audio over USB so you don't have to worry about cables and hum eliminators and all that other stuff? If you didn't know, stay to the end of this video and I'll show you how to get it done. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is the first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Hey, and if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patient or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So very, very cool thing. And honestly, I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out. I actually have this at, I've made the change like this at my ministry. And this is what I'm doing to uh, eliminate a lot of these cables that I have to use when I'm installing, sending audio from a computer to the X32. So the first thing you're gonna need is one of these old um, old printer cables with a USB, USB-B, which looks like a little house right here and then a traditional one right here. So what we're gonna do is connect this in the back of your X32, make sure this is not the remote USB connection, this is the audio interface connection. That's where you're going to connect this to. Now on the computer, you also need to download some drivers. So actually let's go ahead and connect over to the computer that I'm using. And that way we can show you exactly everything that needs to be done. Alrighty. So I am here on my streaming system here and I, I don't have speakers here in my apartment like that. So I have my X32 set up to my sound bar that's right here in front of me. So we'll be able to hear what's coming out of the system. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install our Behringer software. I have a link down below of where you can get that. And all it is is a interface so that the computer will detect and know what the X32 is. And I already have it here installed. So like I said, I'm gonna take this cable and I'm gonna connect it to the back of my X32 here, and we're gonna connect it to any available USB on the computer. Alrighty, so I got a little tight space here. Hopefully I can see what's going on. So here is my X32, and you see the card input over here is what I am connecting to. That one right there, that's in the center of the screen. That's where you connect your USB to. So let me do that real quick. All right, so as you can see, I am connected to the card interface. That's what you need to connect to. All right, so we got that connected. So now we're just gonna connect the other end to our computer. And because we have the drivers installed, you'll see that this changes to know that, hey, it detects our X32. All right, so hopefully you can see that now it's detecting our X32. So that's step number one. Now, the other thing we need to do is now that it's detecting this, we want to set this as our output, our speaker. So we're gonna come over here to our sound and I'm on Windows um, 11. This will work the exact same way with a Mac. And now we see multiple outputs. So you have the Behringer one through eight, seven, eight, five, six, three, four, and there's also one, two. You just gotta pick whichever one. I'm gonna use one, two right now. So that's saying that I'm sending to two channels on the X32. All right, so now let's go ahead and get back into the X32 app. And what we're gonna do now for me, um, I use the user configuration here. So that way you can actually, well actually, no, I don't need to do that because I'm on my rack mount. Just know that if you assign this stuff, if you're using block addressing, you're gonna lose a bunch of channels that you're not using. Remember like on the computer we had one through eight, I only wanna use two channels. So for me, this is available I think in firmware 4.06. So here in the routing, if I bring this over here, you see you can, for your inputs, you do it in blocks of one and eight. If I did that, so right now, if I say I wanna use channels one through eight and I'm only using one and two, I can't use um, the other six. 
So that's why I'm using this user settings so that I can pick and choose which one I want to use, all right? So now I'm here in user, and what I wanna say, um, user config, I'm saying, what am I gonna use for my locals? Right now, I use one through eight. Well, one through six is gonna be here. And say, I'm gonna use seven and eight that way for the board. Those are actual physical connections. Now, I want to say, oh, let's use nine and 10. Nine and 10 right here. I want them to be linked. What's the source of that? I want to select my source for nine and 10 to be card inputs one and two. That's what we just set. So if you picked um, five and six, you would pick that. Seven and eight, you would do it that way. If you wanted to do all of them, you would say that the card inputs one through eight correlate to whatever input you choose, which for mine would be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm not using all of those. So I'm just gonna turn those off because I'm not using those, all right? So again, I have the computer is set with the drivers. The computer is saying use Behringer output one and two. On the Behringer, I'm saying card inputs one and two, which is what we just said in the computer, I want them to be inputs nine and 10 channels on the board, all right? So now that means that my computer is these two channels. And actually, let me move it to seven and eight because I'm not using those. So we'll just turn these back off and we'll go up here to seven and eight and I'm gonna use this. So now, Channel seven and eight are my computer, all right? Now, the other thing I do is because both of them are gonna represent left and right channels, I'm gonna click on channel number seven and I'm gonna stereo link these. So now if I slide one, they both slide. So let's give this a name. We'll say this is PC left and this is PC right. All right, so we got our stuff set up. We got the system connected over USB. We got it all routed and everything. So now let me go over here and let's pick some music. Then I'm gonna start playing here. And as you can see, we are now getting audio here. Actually, let me play that through something different. All right, so as you can see, we're getting music coming over USB. I could easily stop that. And you see nothing is going through and that's all being routed through USB. There's no other connection going to this. So if I turn this audio up, because again, I have this set to my speaker right here in front of me. And that's coming from there. That's being routed over USB. There's no, um, I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this unmuted for a second. And I'm gonna show you that there's no hiss like you normally would get with other cables that you would have to introduce hum eliminators and all that stuff. So hold on. None. Now the only audio that you would hear is just my generic speaker that I have here. That's really not meant for this type of setup. So that's pretty much it. All you have to do is make sure you have a um, USB, like a printer type, I think it's USB, USB B type cable, type B or whatever um, cable that plugs into your computer. Make sure you plug it into the card interface of your X32. I'm using a rack mount. You have the same type of connections on the compact and the full size. On the compact and the full size, you actually have two USBs. Make sure you're in the card interface not the remote interface. Um, you get that, then that's all you really need. And then you just download the driver. So at most you're spending $10 for that cable and that's it. So um, link is down below to everything and I hope that helps you out. So if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching folks. This is AJ. We will catch you on the next video later. Bye.